It was an ordinary Thursday evening when my life veered into the realm of the inexplicable. The house was quiet, almost eerily so, as I made my way up the creaking stairs to my room. The air felt thick, charged with an energy I couldn't quite place. I attributed it to the storm brewing outside with its occasional flickers of distant lightning. Entering my room, I paused by the dresser, glancing at the mirror. It was an old thing, a relic from our grandmother's time, ornate and slightly tarnished. The reflection staring back at me was my own, familiar yet distant, but something was off. A chill ran down my spine as I realized what was wrong. There, in the corner of the mirror, was another reflection. It was Emily, my twin sister. But Emily wasn't in the room. Emily couldn't be in the room. She had died in a tragic accident three years ago. I blinked hard, rubbing my eyes, thinking it was just a trick of the light or my mind playing cruel games. But when I looked again, she was still there, smiling faintly, her eyes meeting mine through the looking glass. I froze, unable to move, unable to scream. It was her, the same soft curls, the same piercing green eyes, the same scar under her chin from when we were kids. But how? Anna, she whispered, her voice a mere echo. Help me. The words hung in the air, sending a shiver down my spine. This was impossible. I had grieved for Emily, mourned her loss. Yet here she was, a ghostly image in the mirror, pleading for help. Emily, is that really you? My voice was barely a whisper, a mix of fear and hope. Yes, it's me, but I'm trapped, Anna. I need you to find out why. I took a step back, my heart pounding. This had to be some kind of hallucination, yet the emotional weight in her gaze was unmistakably real. I had so many questions, but they tangled in my throat, unspoken. Listen to me, Anna. It's not just me who's trapped. Others are too. You have to find the locket. It's the key. Her image flickered as lightning flashed outside, momentarily illuminating the room. The locket? What locket? I asked. But she was fading, her form dissolving into the silvery sheen of the mirror. Find it, Anna. Please. And with those final words, she was gone, leaving me alone with my racing thoughts and a growing sense of dread. I collapsed onto the bed my mind a whirlwind of confusion and fear. Emily's presence, the mention of a locket, it was all too much. Yet there was a part of me, a part that still felt the unbreakable bond of a twin, that knew this was real. Emily was reaching out from beyond, and I had to help her. The rest of the night passed in a blur of restless sleep and unsettling dreams. The first rays of dawn found me determined. I would start with the attic. If there was any locket to be found, any clue to what Emily meant, it would be there, amidst the forgotten relics of our past. As I climbed the narrow attic stairs, a sense of unease settled over me. Dust motes danced in the shafts of light filtering through the small window. The attic was crammed with boxes and old furniture, a testament to our family's long history in this house. I began my search, sifting through old photographs, letters, and various trinkets. Hours passed, and frustration mounted. Just when I was about to give up, my hand brushed against a small, velvet-covered box tucked away in a forgotten corner. Heart racing, I opened it. Inside lay a delicate silver locket, old and tarnished, but unmistakably the one Emily had spoken of. As I held it, a wave of energy surged through me, a connection that defied logic. This was it. This was the key to unraveling the mystery that had consumed my night. With the locket securely in my pocket, I descended the attic stairs, a mix of fear and resolve fueling my steps. Whatever secrets the locket held, whatever truth lay hidden in its depths, I was ready to face it. For Emily, for myself, for the whispering echoes of the past that clung to the walls of our ancestral home, after finding the silver locket in the attic, 
I felt a mix of excitement and dread. The locket was cold in my hand, yet it seemed to pulse with a life of its own. I knew I had to open it, to discover its secrets, but a part of me hesitated. What would I find inside? Would it really help me understand Emily's message? Gathering my courage, I carefully pried open the locket. Inside, I found a tiny, faded photograph. It showed two young women, their faces hauntingly familiar. One of them bore an uncanny resemblance to Emily and me. Beside her, the other woman's stern gaze sent a shiver down my spine. On the back in delicate handwriting were two names, Evelyn and Margaret, 1890, seven. My heart raced. Evelyn looked exactly like us. Could she be a relative? I turned the locket over in my hands, noticing a small inscription on the back, partially obscured by years of tarnish. Squinting, I made out the words, bound by blood, bound by fate. The phrase echoed in my mind, filling me with questions. What did it mean? And what connection did Evelyn and Margaret have with Emily and me? Determined to find answers, I decided to delve into our family history. I remembered my grandmother had a collection of old diaries and journals. Maybe they held some clue about Evelyn and Margaret. I spent hours poring over the yellowed pages of the journals, immersing myself in the world of our ancestors. Finally, I came across an entry that made my heart stop. It was written by Evelyn, and it spoke of a strange bond she shared with her sister, Margaret. They could sense each other's emotions and thoughts, a connection so deep it defied explanation. But there was a darkness to their bond, a secret that seemed to haunt their lives. As I read on, the story became even more chilling. Evelyn wrote about a curse that plagued their family, a curse linked to a tragic event in their past. It seemed that every generation, a pair of twins in our family, experienced this unexplainable bond, and with it, a series of unexplained and often tragic events. I closed the journal, my mind reeling. Emily and I had always been close, but I never imagined something supernatural linked us. Was this the same connection that Evelyn and Margaret experienced? And was it this curse that Emily was trying to warn me about? I looked at the locket again, feeling a newfound sense of urgency. Emily's words echoed in my mind. Find it, Anna, please. I knew then that my journey was just beginning. I had to uncover the truth about our family's curse and find a way to break it. If not for me, then for Emily and the generations to come. That night, I lay in bed. The locket clutched tightly in my hand. As sleep took me, I whispered a silent prayer for guidance. I didn't know what the next day would bring, but I was ready to face it. For Emily, for our family, and for the mysterious bond that connected us across time. In the days following my discovery, I became obsessed with the locket and the secrets of our family history. Each night, I would sit by the window, the locket open in my hand, hoping for a sign, a clue, anything that would help me understand the mysterious bond between Evelyn, Margaret, Emily, and me. One evening, as I sat immersed in thought, a sudden chill swept through the room. The air around me seemed to grow dense, and a faint whisper echoed in the silence. I strained to listen, and in a barely audible voice, I heard find the truth. Anna. It was Emily's voice. I was sure of it. My heart raced with both fear and anticipation. I was on the right path. The next day, I visited the local library, intent on researching the year 1897 and anything related to Evelyn and Margaret. Buried in the archives, I found an old newspaper clipping. The headline sent a shiver down my spine. Tragic death at the Willow Creek Estate. Twins perish in mysterious circumstances. The article detailed the untimely deaths of Evelyn and Margaret, whose lives had ended under strange and unexplained circumstances. The report hinted at supernatural involvement, which the locals whispered about in hushed tones. This revelation only deepened the mystery. Were Emily and I destined for a similar fate? I couldn't accept that. I couldn't accept that. I had to find out how to break this cycle of tragedy that seemed to follow the twins and our family. 
I remembered an old weathered map I had seen in my grandmother's attic, marked with various family properties. One of them was the Willow Creek Estate, the place where Evelyn and Margaret had met their untimely end. I knew that was where I needed to go next. Packing a small bag, I set off for Willow Creek the following morning. The journey was long, and as the sun set, the estate came into view. It was a grand yet foreboding structure, its windows dark and lifeless. A sense of dread washed over me, but I pushed forward, driven by the need to uncover the truth. The front door creaked open at my touch, revealing a dusty, untouched interior. As I stepped inside, the air grew colder, and I felt as if unseen eyes were watching me. I wandered through the halls, each step echoing in the eerie silence, until I found the library. It was there, amidst the ancient books and faded letters, that I hoped to find answers. Hours passed as I searched through the documents. Then, I stumbled upon a journal, its pages yellowed with age. It belonged to Evelyn. Her words painted a vivid picture of her life with Margaret. The strange occurrences that surrounded them, and the chilling realization that their bond was more a curse than a gift. The entries grew increasingly frantic, hinting at a dark presence that haunted them. As I delved deeper into the journal, I discovered a passage that made my blood run cold. Evelyn wrote of a ritual, a way to sever the bond and free them from the curse. But the cost was unimaginable. One of them had to willingly sacrifice themselves to save the other. They had planned to perform the ritual on the night of their death, but whether they succeeded remained a mystery. I closed the journal, my mind racing. Was this the answer Emily wanted me to find? Was there really a way to break the curse? Or was it all just the desperate hope of a frightened girl? Lost in thought, I didn't notice the shadows creeping along the walls, growing darker and more pronounced. A cold hand seemed to grip my heart as I realized I wasn't alone. Whispers filled the room, and in the dim light, I saw figures emerging from the shadows. Two young women, their expressions tormented. Evelyn? Margaret? I whispered, my voice barely audible. They moved closer, and I felt the weight of their sorrow, their unfulfilled destinies. In their eyes, I saw Emily's reflection, and I understood. Our fates were intertwined, bound by blood, and a curse that spanned generations. I knew what I had to do. I had to finish what Evelyn and Margaret started. I had to find a way to end the curse, not just for me, but for Emily, and for all the twins who would come after us. With determination in my heart, I left the estate, the journal clutched tightly in my hand. The path ahead was uncertain and fraught with danger, but I was resolved to see it through. For Emily, for our ancestors, and for the future of our family. The night air was cool as I walked away from Willow Creek, the moon casting long shadows on the ground. I felt the presence of Evelyn and Margaret fading, but their message was clear. I wasn't alone in this fight. With each step, I grew more determined to unravel the mystery of our family's curse and put an end to it once and for all. After leaving the haunting walls of Willow Creek Estate, I found myself drawn to an old secluded library in our hometown. It was a place where Emily and I had spent countless hours as kids, losing ourselves in stories of fantasy and folklore. But now, I was on a quest for a much grimmer narrative. The librarian, Mr. Halloway, recognized me instantly. Anna, it's been ages, he said, his eyes reflecting a mix of surprise and concern. What brings you here after so long? I hesitated, but decided to confide in him. I'm researching family history, I said cautiously, particularly about rituals and curses. Mr. Halloway raised an eyebrow but nodded, leading me to a section filled with ancient texts and manuscripts. There, surrounded by the musty scent of old books, I began my search. Hours turned into days as I pored over texts about folklore, witchcraft, and supernatural phenomena. I learned about rituals used throughout history, some for protection, others for darker purposes. 
but nothing quite matched the description in Evelyn's journal. One rainy afternoon, as I was about to give up for the day, a small leather-bound book caught my eye. It was wedged between two larger volumes, almost as if it was hiding. I carefully pulled it out and opened it. The title sent shivers down my spine. Ancient Rituals of Blood and Bond. The book was old, its pages yellowed, but the words were clear. It spoke of a ritual for severing unnatural bonds, requiring a full moon, a sacred circle, and a willing sacrifice. The details were eerily similar to Evelyn's description. My heart raced. This was it. This was the key to ending the curse. I copied the ritual instructions into my notebook, making sure not to miss a single detail. The ritual needed to be performed at the place where the bond was strongest. For Evelyn and Margaret, it was Willow Creek. For Emily and me, it was our childhood home, where we had spent our happiest moments together. As I left the library, Mr. Halloway called out to me, Be careful, Anna. Some truths are better left undiscovered. His words echoed in my mind, but I was too far gone to turn back now. The days leading up to the full moon were a blur. I gathered the required items, salt for the sacred circle, candles for the four cardinal points, and an heirloom dagger from our family's collection. The dagger had always unnerved me with its intricate handle and sharp, gleaming blade, but it was essential for the ritual. Finally, the night of the full moon arrived. My heart pounded as I stood in the backyard of our childhood home, now empty and echoing with memories. The moon cast a pale light over the overgrown garden, creating long, ominous shadows. I drew the sacred circle with salt and placed the candles at each cardinal point. Taking a deep breath, I lit them one by one, their flames flickering in the gentle night breeze. The air around me grew colder, and I could feel the presence of something unseen. Watching, waiting. With the dagger in hand, I began reciting the incantation from the book. The words felt foreign on my tongue, ancient and powerful. As I spoke, the wind picked up, howling around me as if protesting against the ritual. By the light of the moon and the bond we share, I sever this curse and declare it undone, I chanted. My voice growing stronger, the air crackled with energy, and I felt a tug deep within me as if the curse itself was fighting back. Tears streamed down my face as I thought of Emily, of the life we could have had. With a final heart-wrenching cry, I brought the dagger down, slicing my palm, blood dripped onto the ground, completing the ritual. A blinding light erupted from the circle, and a deafening roar filled the air. I shielded my eyes, feeling the ground shake beneath me. Then, as suddenly as it had begun, it was over. The night was silent once more. I collapsed to the ground, exhausted and drained. My hand throbbed painfully, but in my heart, I felt a sense of release. The bond was broken. The curse was lifted. As dawn broke, painting the sky in hues of pink and orange, I felt a gentle touch on my shoulder. I turned to see Emily standing beside me, her eyes filled with tears, but also relief. You did it, Anna, she whispered. You set us free. I embraced her, feeling an overwhelming sense of peace. Our family's curse was finally broken, thanks to the bravery and love of two sets of twins, separated by time, but united by fate. In the calm after the ritual, as the first rays of dawn kissed the horizon, Emily and I sat in our childhood garden, the air around us filled with a serene silence. The curse was broken, but the weight of our family's legacy still hung heavily on us. We should visit the estate one last time, Emily suggested softly. There's something I need to show you. Her voice held a hint of mystery, a gentle nudge towards another piece of our family's intricate puzzle. We drove to the Willow Creek estate in silence, the morning light casting long shadows across the old structure. The house looked different in the daylight, less menacing, but still holding secrets in its ancient walls. Inside, Emily led me to the library, where she removed a book from the shelf, 
revealing a hidden compartment behind it. Inside the compartment was a small, ornate box. She opened it with reverent hands to reveal a pair of delicate silver lockets, each bearing the initials of Evelyn and Margaret. These were their lockets, Emily said, her eyes glistening. Our great aunts. I found them hidden here, along with a letter. It's from Evelyn to Margaret. She handed me a faded piece of paper. The handwriting elegant and precise. The letter spoke of love, of sacrifice, and of a guardian spirit they had summoned to protect future generations from the curse. Evelyn had realized that the curse was too powerful to be broken easily, so they sought help from beyond. This guardian, bound by blood and love, had watched over our family, ensuring the curse did not claim more lives than it already had. Tears blurred my vision as I read the last lines of the letter. Our dearest Margaret, we may not be there in body, but our spirit will always be with you, guiding and protecting our family. Love, Evelyn. We were never alone, Emily whispered, her voice filled with awe. Even in our darkest moments, they were there, watching over us. We decided to keep the lockets, a symbol of our connection to our past and the guardian spirits that had silently guided us. As we left the estate, I felt a gentle breeze, like a soft caress, and I knew it was our great aunt's way of saying goodbye. Back at home, life slowly returned to normal, but the adventure we had experienced lingered in our minds. Emily and I grew closer, our bonds strengthened by the shared ordeal, and the knowledge that our family spirits had always been with us. One evening, while flipping through old photo albums, I came across a picture of Evelyn and Margaret, each wearing their locket. Their faces, once just names in a dusty journal, now felt familiar, almost like looking at older versions of Emily and me. I placed the photo on the mantel, alongside a new one of Emily and me, each wearing our inherited lockets. It was a tribute to the past and a reminder that we are never truly alone. As I drifted off to sleep that night, I heard a soft whisper like a sigh carried on the wind. Be brave, be strong, and remember, you are loved. It was the voice of our guardian, a final farewell now that their duty was fulfilled. In my dreams, I saw Evelyn and Margaret smiling and at peace, their spirits finally free to rest. They had passed on their legacy of love and protection, a gift that Emily and I would carry forward. As the days passed since our visit to the Willow Creek estate, a lingering sense of unease began to gnaw at me. There was a piece of the puzzle still missing, a shadow lurking just beyond the reach of our understanding. Emily felt it too, her usually bright eyes clouded with questions. One chilly evening, as we sat by the fireplace, a knock echoed through our quiet home. Standing at the door was Mr. Harris, the old caretaker of the Willow Creek estate. His appearance was unexpected, yet it felt like a piece falling into place in a larger, unseen picture. I need to show you something, he said, his voice urgent. Without waiting for a reply, he led us to his car. The drive was silent, each of us lost in our thoughts, the moon casting a pale glow over the landscape. Arriving at the estate, Mr. Harris guided us to a part of the house we had never explored. It was a small, secluded room, hidden behind a movable bookshelf in the library. The room was filled with artifacts, journals, and old photographs. These belonged to your great aunts, Evelyn and Margaret, Mr. Harris explained, his hands trembling slightly. They were more than just guardians of your family. They were protectors of something much older and more powerful. He handed us an old, leather-bound journal. The writings inside were in a language I didn't recognize, filled with strange symbols and drawings. Mr. Harris watched us closely, his eyes reflecting the fire's flicker. This is the original curse, he said. It was not just a family affliction. It was a pact made with something ancient something that lies beneath this estate. Emily and I exchanged a glance, the weight of his words settling over us. The guardian spirits of our great aunts had protected us, but the source of the curse was still present, 
buried deep within the ground on which the estate stood. We must find a way to end this once and for all, Emily said, her voice steady despite the fear I saw in her eyes. Mr. Harris nodded, his expression solemn. I've spent years trying to understand it, to find a way to break the pact. Your great aunts knew, but they took the secret to their graves. He pointed to a map on the wall, marked with lines and symbols that seemed to form a pattern around the estate. There's something beneath the house, a chamber or a vault. I believe the answer lies there. Determined to uncover the truth and end the curse, Emily and I agreed to help Mr. Harris. We spent hours poring over the journal and the map, trying to decipher the symbols and understand the layout of the underground chamber. As night deepened, a plan began to form. The following day, armed with flashlights and determination, we found the entrance to the chamber hidden beneath the old wine cellar. The air was cold and still as we descended the ancient stone steps, the darkness around us thick and oppressive. At the bottom of the staircase, we found ourselves in a vast underground chamber, its walls covered in the same strange symbols from the journal. In the center of the room stood a pedestal upon which lay an old, ornate dagger. Mr. Harris' voice echoed in the chamber. This dagger, it's part of the pact. It was used to seal the agreement with whatever lies here. Emily picked up the dagger, her hand trembling slightly. Then we use it to break the pact. As she spoke, the chamber began to shake. Dust falling from the ceiling. A deep rumbling sound filled the air, growing louder and more intense. Whatever we're going to do, we need to do it fast, I shouted over the noise. Emily nodded, her face set with resolve. She raised the dagger high, the symbols on the walls glowing with an eerie light. With a swift motion, she brought the dagger down onto the pedestal, the blade sinking into the ancient stone. A blinding light erupted from the impact, enveloping us in its radiance. When the light faded, the chamber was silent. The oppressive feeling that had hung in the air was gone, replaced by a sense of peace and closure. We emerged from the underground chamber, the weight of generations lifted from our shoulders. The curse was broken, the pact undone. The spirits of Evelyn and Margaret could finally rest, their legacy of protection and love living on in us. As we left the estate for the last time, I felt a gentle breeze, a whisper of gratitude from the past. Our family was free, and the shadows that had haunted the Willow Creek estate were no more. The days following our return from the Willow Creek estate passed in a surreal blur. Emily and I found ourselves adjusting to a life free from the haunting shadows of the past. Yet, a part of me couldn't shake off the feeling that there was more to uncover, a final piece of the puzzle that remained elusive. One afternoon, as we sat in our living room, a knock at the door broke the silence. I opened it to find a young woman, her eyes wide with a mix of curiosity and apprehension. She introduced herself as Sarah, a distant relative we had never met. I've been researching our family history, Sarah began, her voice tinged with excitement. After hearing about your visit to the estate and the breaking of the curse, I had to meet you. She carried an old, worn-out suitcase, which she gently placed on the coffee table. This belonged to Evelyn and Margaret. She said, opening it to reveal a trove of old letters, photographs, and a small, intricately carved box. As we sifted through the contents, Sarah shared her discoveries. Our great aunts were much more than guardians. They were part of a secret society dedicated to protecting ancient knowledge and artifacts. The letters were correspondence between Evelyn and Margaret and other members of this society. They spoke of hidden truths, a battle against dark forces, and the crucial role our family played in this ongoing struggle. Emily's eyes fell upon the small box. Carefully, she opened it, revealing a crystal pendant, its surface etched with familiar symbols. This. This was mentioned in the journal, she whispered. It's a key of sorts, a way to access hidden knowledge. As the sun began to set, casting long shadows across the room, 
we felt a sense of urgency. This was more than just family history. It was a call to action, a responsibility passed down through generations. Sarah looked at us, determination in her eyes. I believe we're meant to continue what our great aunt started. There's a reason we're all here, why we've been drawn together. That night, under the light of the full moon, we gathered in the garden, the crystal pendant held aloft. As we chanted the words from the journal, the air around us shimmered and a vision appeared. It was a map, not of a place, but of time, showing a series of events that had shaped our family's destiny. We saw the founding of the secret society, the battles fought in the shadows, and the sacrifices made to protect the world from unseen dangers. The vision ended with a glimpse of the future, a challenge that awaited us, a darkness that would rise and test our resolve. We knew then that our journey was far from over. As the vision faded, a sense of unity filled our hearts. We were the latest in a long line of protectors, and it was our turn to stand guard against the darkness. We have much to learn and prepare for, Sarah said, her voice steady, but together we'll be ready. We agreed to meet regularly, to study the artifacts, and delve deeper into the mysteries that our great aunts had left behind. Our lives had changed irrevocably, but we embraced this new purpose with courage and hope. The weeks following our discovery were filled with intense research and preparation. The ancient texts and artifacts we found in the old suitcase revealed much about the dark forces we were up against. They spoke of a time, centuries ago, when these forces nearly broke through into our world, only to be thwarted by the secret society our great aunts belonged to. As Sarah, Emily, and I delved deeper into our family's history, we realized that the upcoming lunar eclipse would be a crucial moment. According to the prophecy we deciphered, it was when the barrier between worlds would be at its weakest, allowing the dark forces a chance to break through. Our preparation led us to a secluded forest, known in the texts as the Veil of Shadows. On the night of the eclipse, armed with the knowledge passed down through generations and the ancient artifacts, including the crystal pendant, we were ready to face whatever lay ahead. As the moon began to align, a chilling wind swept through the forest and the air crackled with unseen energy. Shadows danced around us, taking on menacing forms. Emily clutched the crystal pendant, its light pulsing in response to the growing darkness. We must form the circle of light, Sarah instructed as we joined hands, the pendant at the center. We recited the incantation, our voices echoing through the trees. As we chanted, the pendant glowed brighter, casting a protective shield around us. The shadows converged, forming a swirling vortex of darkness. From within, a figure emerged, a manifestation of the dark forces, its presence overwhelming. Stay strong, I shouted, feeling the energy from the pendant course through us. We continued the incantation, the air shimmering with ancient power. The figure, a twisted creature of darkness, lunged at our shield, but the light held firm. It howled in rage, the sound echoing through the forest as it clawed at the barrier we had created. In that moment, Emily stepped forward, holding the pendant out towards the creature. With a final burst of light, the pendant shattered, releasing a wave of energy that swept through the forest. The creature let out a final, ear-piercing scream before dissolving into the night, the vortex collapsing in on itself. Exhausted, we collapsed to the ground, the forest now eerily silent. The eclipse had passed, and with it, the immediate threat. As dawn broke, we knew our journey wasn't over. The secret society's legacy was now ours to carry on. We had protected the world this time, but there would be other battles, other dark forces to face. We left the forest with a newfound purpose, bound by our shared destiny. Our lives had changed forever, but we were ready for whatever lay ahead, guardians of a world that would never know the dangers we had averted. In the end, it wasn't just about facing the darkness. It was about preserving the light, 
a task we would undertake with unwavering determination. Thanks for listening. If you like the story, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel, and I look forward to your comments. See you in the next video.